Hello, I'm Aaron Sims, the founder of the Aaron Sims Creative. We're a design visual effects studio for the entertainment industry. Today, we're going to be discussing virtual production and focusing on bringing unreal creatures to the film industry. So let's get into it. All right, before we jump into the virtual production aspect of my discussion, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of insight of who Aaron Sims Creative is, what we do, a bit of a background, just so you have context uh, as I discuss um, our approach on virtual production and the changes that are happening in the industry. Now, there's a bit more information if you go to the AaronSimsCreative.com about what we do. Um, so I encourage that if you want to know a bit more about us, our background, um, from the design aspects to uh, our real-time VR and AR. Our other services, you know, uh, get into 3D printing, uh, visual effects, uh, augmented reality, all that, all that fun stuff. But there's a lot more information if you go to the AaronSimsCreative.com on everything we've done, but also what we are doing as a company and how we're evolving. We also have created our own originals. Um, there's a little bit of discussion on that. And this particular one we're looking at now, which is called Dive, is one of the films that we are creating, one of our IPs, along with uh, Epic. Epic has helped us um, with a grant to get us uh, to um, creating some of the R&D and the previs for the entire film, which we are into right now. And then we're going to get into production and virtual uh, production with that as well. So. Um, along with that, my company, along with several other companies uh, you can see here, um, have created a kind of a collection of, of some of the most uh, a variety of uh, techniques and, uh, and skill levels that these companies together are helping the process of creating these changes in the industries, uh, mainly in the virtual production area. Um, our company itself is more of a design visual effects, you know, back in my background was makeup effects. But a lot of these other companies that we've collaborated with, uh, and this is called, this company, this collective of companies is called Monolith. You can find out more about us at monolith-vfx.com. Um, there's a lot happening there uh, as far as the technology of virtual production. I encourage you to check it out. And just a little bit, this, I don't want to bore you. I'm going to go through this very quick, but just uh, here's a glimpse of my uh, life in the industry, how it's changed from the 70s when I was a kid, uh, creating Super 8 movies, uh, paintings, you know, as an artist, uh, creating fantastical worlds, um, uh, the dream to come out to Hollywood from Texas to have a career. And luck, I was lucky enough in the 80s to be able to do that, worked on From Beyond, Elm Street, uh, Gremlins 2. And then in the 90s, uh, Men in Black, you can see an example. Um, and the two, in 2000, it was uh, joined forces with Stan Winston to uh, help uh, kind of change a little bit of the way I designed at that time. He really pushed me into using 3D animation tools such as uh, Soft Homage at the time as a design tool for AI. Um, and that was kind of the first endeavor in that uh, arena, which was really fun and it kind of like pushed um, the, the uh, digital design tools to a new level. Um, from there, in the two, you know, two thousand tens, you know, there was uh, you can see below um, from the Hulk to Planet of the Apes uh, and many others. Um, but what what I've evolved to um, and you, and where we're at right now is what was exciting is from the eighties when I started in the career is that everything was real time. We had puppets. We were and not that that's gone away at all. It still exists. Um, you can also see uh, the range that I am uh, a creature guy. I like to make monsters. I'm, that is my specialty, and that's my love. It's bringing these characters to life. And I've done it in different ways for, through different uh, tools. Um, right now, the demands have changed quite a bit, and Unreal has given us and myself the ability to take us and our journey um, creating these characters in real time and bringing them to set if we, you know, and I'll get into that a little bit. Um, but before we do, let me just show you, this is just, you know, uh, um, I encourage you to look at our reel on our website that shows a bit more of our design to uh, traditional visual effects. This right here will be a quick reel that just shows a bit of what we've done in the last couple of months, really, 
uh, in Unreal. Um, and uh, you'll see a lot of creatures, and we'll discuss that on the other side. Um, so, um, what's kind of uh, fun about all this, just, you know, it's just a quick glimpse of just, like I said, in just the uh, last uh, couple of months that we've been kind of really focused on uh, Unreal and its tools to create these uh, incredible creatures and worlds. So, um, I'm just going to skim through some of this and just discuss a little bit, but um, much like this alien here, this is for one of our IP projects. So, we do a lot of R&D, the robot here as well. Uh, is for a project that we actually have a book coming out called Tank, and we're doing an animated series uh, with Epic. Um, and then this is some of the stuff from our Project Dive, which uh, it's, we'll get into here shortly, um, which is a lot of previs and some of our, our first R&D phases. Um, and, uh, you know, and there's several other creatures in here. So it's, it's, it's just a, a powerful tool. Um, um, you know, Epic uh, has created something that for me as an artist have, has allowed me to create some of the stuff that I dreamed of when I was younger, and it took a lot more people to do um, to bring this stuff to life, even with makeup effects or visual effects. When Now it's just, you know, uh, if you have the tools and you have the ability, you can create this. Um, so uh, with that, I'm just going to jump into uh, our Project Dive. Dive is working with Epic um, has helped us um, create where we're at right now, which is in the previous area and um, the R and D phase of our of how we're actually going to approach production. It's a very exciting project for us. It's a passion project that's to be released in 2021, um, probably towards the end of the year. Uh, we'll be in hopefully production at the, big, the beginning of the year. So stay tuned on that. And this, this right here, I'm not going to show it to you. I encourage you, I'll, I'll send a link to it, but it's basically, it's the initial dive trailer that we created. And some of this stuff you saw in the show reel we just showed, but it's basically these environments we created, um, for basically a pitch reel for dive to get it going. Um, and so it's, it's created a lot of interest and, uh, what we've done, we've learned a lot since then. And we have been progressing on how we're actually going to approach the film. So this just shows a little bit of, uh, and this is no compositing in any of these shots were ever done. It was all real time. Um, and I'm skipping through it, so you're not seeing any of this stuff. So I encourage you to check it out. It's uh, There'll be a link um, or go to our website, to our originals. There's a link there to the, the short uh, or the trailer for it. And, um, and there's a lot of uh, more information that's going to come. So the one thing that I haven't uh, shown anyone really uh, until now is uh, some some of the other creatures for dive. We as we you know continue, there's a lot of stuff you'll see on the internet and uh, 
that we've been posting with our spiders, some of the other creatures. This is another creature that we just created. And um, what I, th I think is amazing about it, and this is, again, this is a test R&D um, of this creature, which I call the tongue creature. And uh, when you understand the movie, it will all make sense. Um, I'm not going to give away the, the purpose of it, but it's um, these creatures in this movie, uh, both underwater and um, on land, um, and these caves are tormenting these uh, these people. Um, now, this creature here is made to be uh, probably you know a couple of feet long at most. Um, there's other creatures in the film that we're going to be creating that are much larger, and they will be uh, more um, beneficial for. Um, some of the stuff I'm going to show you here in a bit for virtual production. Um, but let's just dive into this scene real quick. Uh, and just kind of show you like kind of in real time, the, what we just looked at, that little clip, um, how this is playing out. And, and also just kind of the stats of uh, the frame rate. So what I'm really excited about, and this is, this is again, this is what makes Unreal so powerful, is that I can get this kind of incredible resolution, incredible detail, bring these creatures to life, and at this frame rate, which is uh, unheard of, to be able to get this instant gratification for not only just myself um, and, and for our films, but for, for a client. See, a client that needs to see changes on the fly, you are actually able to see that immediately. Um, and change either, you know, aspects of the camera. We can update uh, the creature's animation right there in real time. Um, a little bit more on this creature. Let's get rid of all this fun stuff that's around. Um, but so here you kind of, we just created this little uh, landscape um, of rocks, which is just to kind of like put the creature in. And the idea is that it's kind of just coming up from the ground. Um, this is again, this is just early R&D, uh, but uh, what I, it was, like I said, what is very exciting about it is, is this real-time interaction with it. Um, and so what I want to do now is just show you like this creature here, um, if we were to possibly bring this, scale it up, it get into like a huge creature, like the size of a Godzilla or something like that, put it in a scene where you had an actor that uh, was on set. So let's jump into a virtual production scenario. Now this particular um, demo, uh, this little thing I put here, um, imagine it can be done several different ways. Now there's the um, traditional uh, green screen, which is what we actually have here, shows the green screen, the uh, this actor in a costume uh, performing. He can't really see what he's, uh, uh, what's on, and that this is the uh, disadvantage of green screen a lot of times is your actors just have to make up what's beyond this. Um, what's great about the new technology that has been used in Disney's Mandalorian and Oblivion and uh, several others is that and it's the new um, LED projection based uh, uh, scenario. So it also lights your scene, and um, the actors, what's amazing is it's in camera, so there's less. If you can get it all right, it's uh, you know, and that's it's still its early phases, early days, um, and we're in the process now of actually doing some R and D for our our projects as well as dive. Now this isn't this this is not for dive. This this is just an example I wanted to put together to just show how you could with imagine this could either be LEDs or it's green screen, but even on set you could actually have a, a monitor off site, and this is you know. What's great is that in real time, if we wanted to, we could say we want to move this. And this is, you know, basically this right here is our background. So we just, which is, you know, behind the uh, the screen here. So this could be done either through LED or, like I said, it's it's if you don't if you can't afford the LED uh, scenario, which is still evolving. There's always green screen, but then having this ability to be on set. And being able to maneuver, like just say as an art director or a director, you said, you know what, actually, I thought it would be good if this was centered, but because of the actors over where he's at, and I want this to kind of be, you know, um, uh, over here, maybe we want to scale it up or something like that, you know, make it a little larger. This is just some weird monument kind of a thing that's um, 
And so this mix is just for that instant um, kind of, you know, gratification uh, on while you're shooting um, your actors to be able to see these changes on the fly. So, so the, let's, let's add like our creature that we just looked at. So this is, and this is part of my, my the thing I'm excited about, because again, this is stuff that, you know, a lot of people have probably said, oh yeah, yeah I've seen that. That's you know cool, whatever. And it's also green screen. So, uh, but what about like a creature? What if you were to put a creature in? So the same um, ideas apply. Let's just do that. Let's bring that little, that little uh, tongue creature I just showed you and kind of bring him in here and show him uh, in this scene. Um, all right, let's find our creature. Here's your tongue creature. There he is. I'm going to drop him in the background here so we can see. And because he, like I said, he was like this tiny little creature, you're not going to see him. Uh, so I'm going to have to scale him up. Let's just scale him up bigger than you can see. Let's do 500. Let's scale him up a lot. Make him huge. All right, cool. Um, okay, so we brought him in the scene. Uh, he's off to the side here, you can see. Uh, so part of what you want to do when you're actually creating some of these scenarios is like try to line up. You can do it with the camera that's actually here. So what we have here on the left is is this is the uh, how this is all set up. This is all the different components underneath. We have our uh, CG element, our plate, and uh, the foreground. So, and this is the combination of all those. This is very simple. Obviously, you can combine, you can add a lot more stuff to it. I'm just trying to make it very simple for us all to see and understand how cool this is and on the fly. So let's just we're going to bring our creature and let's put him in here. He's floating up too much and uh, let's bring him a little closer to us. Maybe rotate him around, something kind of cool, so we can kind of see those weird appendages. Um, put him here. And now what I want to do is like, okay, so Coley's in, in the shot. Is he dead? He's not moving. So we do, we can just drag him into our sequencer. Uh, okay, let me show you this. Is a, Clean this up a little bit. Is uh, we again drag him into the sequencer, and then let's apply some animation. So this is the animation, the same animation that we just saw in the other thing. So uh, the uh, the other scene I was just showing you that was not a composite scene. So now we just we have our little creature. Uh, it's no longer a little creature, but he's all down there, and he's like. And, uh, and now we have them kind of like lifting up. So we. So there he is. He's like moving. That's very fun. It's cool. Uh, this guy doesn't seem to care. It's like that, that would freak me out if I saw something big like that. One thing is, uh, too, uh, because he was made to be smaller, uh, his, his movements are fairly fast. So we want to go into the properties and change the, the rate of. Um, his speed, um, so he feels a bit more massive. So I'm just gonna just guessing at this right now, just to see what this looks like. Um, and this is again, this is the the fun of it. So he slowed down a bit more. Um, you can keep going if you want to make him like feel. The slower it is, the bigger it feels a lot of times. Um, obviously, you'd want to do some augmentation to the animation um, here and there. But what's great, the beauty of this is is just the instant uh, feedback that you're getting. So much like uh, this big, cool monument, there he goes, we're walking away. But what if we had him? Yeah, let's do this. All right. We'll move him. Uh, The idea here is what I want to do is kind of move him into a place to where it looks like he's he was in the distance and he's coming towards us, which would be kind of fun. So imagine what's great about this height, this the whole concept of being able to do this is that this is the beauty of like same thing with Mandalorian and uh, how they're approaching that, where the background is in in the frame. Um, say you spend a bit more time on the. Uh, oh, let's see. Actually, I would like to move him closer by this point. So. 
Let's here rotate and so let me something like that. Um, this way he's he's in the distance here. So um, so imagine that you get a, a shot like this where the guy comes up, let's wait for him to come back. It's like we say let's, let's his little corners down even further. All right, so the guy comes in, uh, this creature comes to life, and it's like, obviously your actor would be, you, this would give the ability of the actor to see where the creature is, um, also react to it, and the thing is can, you know, coming to life. Um, so yeah, fun stuff like that. So it was like, oh, this, this guy, and then he starts coming towards us, wow. Just gets really crazy. So it's just it's it's fun and um, what you can do uh, in real time. And this is where I really want to push what we're doing as a company um, is have these tools that we can actually have for directors ourselves, anyone that that basically needs to use them uh, on set in real time. Um, let me move this thing out of the way and see, just so it's not a distraction. It seems like he was. So let's move this. All right, let's go back. So that's cool. So he's coming up on the ground. Um, so yeah, you can see, you know, you spend a bit more time too all on also just adjusting uh, the lighting, you know, to get it completely right. But then uh, just say um, this scenario for poor man's um, green screen that you can still see even if the actor can't then you, they, you can show them right afterwards and it looks like he's going underneath but you get the idea so <laughs> um, well that's pretty much all the time I have and uh, I just want to thank you for spending some time with me and seeing how we actually approach virtual production bringing unreal creatures to the film industry <laughs>